In this video, we're going to move on with our discussion of the blend modes inside of Photoshop. Now, I've created a brand new document, and I've put two layers in it, being layer one and layer two. Notice I'm not using blend and base right now. I'm keeping this extremely simple. Now, let's start off by dropping down some colors that we can use uh, just as examples. So what I'm going to do is jump to layer one, and there's a reason I'm not naming these, by the way, in case you're curious. I'm going to grab my foreground color swatch and set this to a shade of red. I'm not going with 25500 red, so it's a little bit toned down, but not by much. Next, I'm going to grab the Paint Bucket tool. You can grab this by clicking on the Gradient Toolbox if you see it, or uh, just by the Paint Bucket tool itself, but it's located in this group. So if, if what you see is the Gradient tool, hold down the mouse button and choose the Paint Bucket tool, or just hit Shift-G until you see that little Paint Bucket. And with Layer 1 selected, I'm going to click and fill this whole box with a brilliant red. Next, I'm going to switch to Layer 2, and then alternate back over to the Gradient tool. Now, I don't know what your gradient is currently set at. Up in my options box, you'll notice that I'm still looking uh, at this rainbow gradient. I'm going to click on that sample, and this allows me to choose a preset for my gradient. I'm going to choose the basic black to white preset and click OK. Then, holding the shift key, I'm going to drag from left to right across my document, and that's going to put down a nice big wide gradient that goes from black to white. Now this is why I did not name either of these layers base or blend because I'm actually going to alternate between the two. This next set of blend modes that we're going to be talking about spans from overlay down to hard mix and the nature of these blend modes will change on a few things. It'll, it'll change depending on the overall brightness of the blend color versus its darkness and the behavior will flip-flop based on that. So if you have a bright blend color then you'll get one response. If you have a darker blend color, you'll get an entirely separate response, which is why we're using a gradient. At the same time, the order in which you lay these two colors on top of each other will also change the behavior. So I want to give you kind of a heads up about how that works as well. So for starters, let's take a look at overlay. We'll start off by setting layer two to overlay. It's currently stacked on top of the sheet of red. And here's what we get. You have to look really closely, and it might not even translate very well to video, but the left-hand side of our document is slightly darker. What Overlay is actually doing is screening or multiplying based on the difference between the base and the blend colors, meaning this can both lighten and darken based on that difference. Now, with the gradient on top and the gradient set to overlay, we do not get much of a reaction. However, if I set the gradient back over to normal, and then I reverse the order of these two layers, so let's just put the red sheet on top and then set the red over to overlay, check out what we get. We get our full gradient. It's like a, a nice perfect gradient that goes from black to full red, to white. I really like using overlay when I've got a grayscale image and I need to add some color to it because it's going to maintain that nice luminosity, but it's still also going to allow you to darken in those areas where your base color is nice and dark. So there's a really quick look at overlay. Let's go ahead and set our uh, original color back over to normal and we'll take a look at soft light next. Now you'll see that several of these blend modes use the word light. So we have soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, and pin light. What that means is the blend color is thought of as a light source being projected down onto the base. So starting with soft light, what this is doing is burning or dodging, meaning it's either darkening or lightening, but we'll use the term burning or dodging, uh, based on the blend color. Any part of the blend color that is lighter than 50% gray gets lightened, uh, anything darker gets darkened, and generally the effect is very gentle. So in this case, because we're trying to lay the color on top of the gradient, you see what we get here, and the result is much less harsh than what we're getting with overlay, which we can see the difference if we cycle between the two. So there's overlay, which is going to that full shade of red, where soft light is keeping things a little more muted. Now let's reverse the two. We'll set our red back over to normal, we'll reverse our two layers, and then we'll set the gradient over to soft light, and again, we're really not getting much of a change. If you look really closely, the right side of the dark, uh, document is lighter than the left side, but it's extremely subtle. So we'll go ahead and switch that back over to normal, and we'll move on to our next blend mode, which is hard light. And what hard light is going to do is either screen or multiply based on the blend color, and the result is much uh, harsher 
than what you saw with soft light. So here, this actually looks a lot like how overlay looked when the color was on top of the gradient. But right now, remember that the gradient is on top. If I reverse the two by setting the gradient back to normal and putting the color on top and switch that over to hard light, again, we get almost no response. So the order in which these layers are stacked on top of each other is going to make a difference. I just, I, I want to kind of keep stressing that. So I'm going to put this back on top. We'll set our color back over to normal. And our next blend mode is vivid light. Vivid light is going to burn or dodge by adjusting contrast. So instead of just multiplying or screening, it's actually adjusting the contrast of the colors. Where the blend color is 50% uh, I'm sorry, where the blend color is lighter than 50% gray, contrast is going to be decreased. So where it's lighter, contrast is decreased. Where it's darker than 50% gray, the contrast is going to be increased. So we'll go ahead and switch this on, and you can see that adjustment in contrast. We have very high contrast here, very low contrast as we get over to the, uh, the lighter side. Now if I reverse those by setting the gradient back over to normal and reversing my two colors... Make sure that is normal before I forget. And then switch this over to Vivid Light. We get almost the exact same response. Now next we have Linear Light. Now Linear Light with the color on top is a very, very subtle effect. We are getting a little bit of trace darkening here on the left-hand side. But let's go ahead and switch the color over to Normal. And we'll reverse our two layers again. And this time we'll set linear over to this side. Now what linear is actually doing is burning or dodging by adjusting the brightness. So it's just adjusting that brightness color channel to give us a result. And obviously it's working a whole lot more dramatically, a whole lot better uh, when we put the gradient on top of the solid color. All right, next we have pin light. And what pin light is going to do is replace the colors. Where the blend is uh, lighter than 50% gray, pixels darker than the blend are going to be replaced. Let me go ahead and switch over to pin real quick. And it's a really subtle change from linear. Uh, where the blend is darker than 50% gray, pixels lighter than the blender getting replaced. So it's a little bit confusing to follow. Honestly, and I'll, I'll probably end up saying this once again sooner or later, but generally speaking, all I need to know when I'm trying to choose my perfect blend mode is what each one of these sections do, and then I'll just kind of pick and choose between which one gives me the... Uh, the look that I'm actually chasing. So if you find yourself going, well, I'm never going to remember what each one of these does, don't stress that. Uh, that's not going to be a detriment to you at all. And then once again, in this case, if we put the color sheet on top of the gradient and switch over to pin light, the result is extremely subtle. Now our last blend mode is hard mix. Now what hard mix is going to do is add the RGB data for each one of the channels. So the red channels uh, added together for both colors, the green channels added together, and the blue channels added together. If the result is greater than 255, then it's clamped at 255. If the result is any less than 255, then that channel will receive a value of zero or well, nothing at all. Now this means that all of your pixels will become red, green, or blue or, in the case where more than one channel is set to 255, cyan, magenta, yellow, or where all three are set to either 255 or zero, either black or white. So you'll end up with red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, or white. Those will be the only colors visible. Now I do want to mention something, just kind of as an aside. If I was to create a brand new layer, just to show this one aspect of hard mix off, if I choose a perfect 255 red, and I was to paint this down, so let me hold down the shift key when I do that. I'm going to do this a couple of ways, too. I just want to I want to make this really apparent, so bear with me. I realize this is kind of maybe going a little bit above and beyond what you wanted to see, but it is pretty cool, so I want you to keep it in mind. Now, I'm going to make a 255 stripe of green, and then let's do a 255 stripe of blue. And I'll put them right next to each other, like so. Now, watch this. I'm going to hold down the Alt key. Actually, I'm going to get my Move Tool out first. Let me hit the V key. So that's V as in Victor to grab the Move Tool. Holding down the Alt key, I'm going to drag out a copy of this guy, right? So we have these two groups of stripes. Now, I only need one copy. One's, one is more than enough. The upper copy, I'm going to set over to Hard Mix. And it immediately disappears. And you're not going to see any result. That's because... These three colors that I dropped down are completely pure. And whenever they're completely pure, it seems, I'm not saying this is true, I'm not saying this is documented, I'm saying it seems like the behavior of hard mix starts to fail just a little bit. To give you an idea of what I mean when I say that, watch this. If I 
do something very similar, we choose a slightly less saturated version of red, like so, and let's go down to a layer three, just like we did a minute ago. And I'll do the same thing. We'll just paint down a stripe of red, and then a slightly less dramatic shade of blue. So something right about here. And then a slightly less dramatic shade of green. So something right about here. And I do the same thing. So let's just make another copy of this layer. Actually, hold, let me get the Move tool out, hold down Alt, drag out a copy like so. I'm going to set this guy over to Hard Mix. And if I was to rotate this layer sideways, let me see, let's go to Edit, I'm sorry, Image. No, I'm sorry, it, I'm, forget me, it was under Edit, Transform, Rotate, Clockwise, uh, 90 degrees, that'll be fine. And I'll switch this over to Normal so I can see what I'm doing. If I stack these on top of one another, and then I switch over to hard mix, you'll notice we are getting a result. So things are certainly changing. But in those instances where you end up with uh, pure colors, hard mix is not really doing much. One more thing I want to show, and this is just to prove one final point. I realize I'm kind of beating the dead horse now, but uh, watch this. If we grab our regular paintbrush, because I was using the pencil tool because that gives you full 100% color, I can even do 255. And we can paint red. And we can paint green. And then we can paint blue. Now, what's different about this example? Well, because I'm using such a soft brush, we actually have a lot of values in here that are not pure green, not pure red, not pure blue. And if I was to copy this off one more time, get the Move tool out, Alt-Drag out a copy of the layer, set the upper version to... Actually, before I, I set to anything, let me rotate this. I'm going to hit Control-T, which is Transform, and I'm going to rotate this sideways. It doesn't have to be perfect, so... Just something so that they're laying over each other like so. Again, that's control T and then just drag at the corners and it'll rotate around for you. And then if I set this over to hard mix, check out what we get. You start seeing some of those cyan, uh, magenta, and yellow colors popping out. However, right down the center, you'll notice, uh, I didn't mean to change my blend mode. I was trying to zoom in there. There we go. You'll notice there are some little blotches in here which are not changing. That's because only in these pixels we had pure 255 red. And as I mentioned, that's where the behavior of hard mix seems to kind of fail. So while it might be a little bit overboard, a little excessive, I just wanted to, to stress to you how that was actually working because I've had a lot of folks say, like, I've, I've got emails and PMs, so I just don't see how hard mix is actually working. There's what it's doing. It's just adding together the channels and it's firing back uh, some sort of result with either 255 or zero in each channel. Now, once more, just uh, to sort of drop this into your lap one more time, this entire section of layer, uh, I'm sorry, of blend modes is really all about just controlling how you're blending in such a way that based on the blend color, you're either lightening or darkening, where obviously these are strictly for darkening, these are going to be for lightening, these could really go either way, they're kind of like hybrids. That is going to wrap things up for this video, thanks a lot.